actually from the day of acceptance, we are proactively coming alongside of them, praying for them, encouraging them, motivating them, keeping their vision of why they came, and uh, so then we get to see them walk across the stage at some point down the road. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Tony, what do you do? I'm an engine instructor over on the other side of the airbase. And they can probably hear me about this. So. <laughs> and, and I, I get, get all the random students, students with, with all their goods and bads and their, and their weaknesses, weaknesses and strengths. And I love them all to death. For a grown man to hug another man on the first dates, I don't have a problem with it, but it scares some other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not strange, it just comes out that way. I, um, I help them with, with the death of the family and divorces, child raising, and how to be a good husband. And, how to find Jesus, and, and I teach them, I try to teach them most of the time. I say like 95% I teach them good stuff. Every now and then, 5% is some bad stuff that might step out, but we can catch them later on down the road. That's about what I do. People that met me at the front door, I got, I've been blessed with it, being able to talk. And I've been blessed with a bucket of love that God says, when you go back home, it should be empty. And I, I, I share it. I've only had, uh, all the time that I've been here in seven years, I've had three people step away and didn't want to hug. Three out of seven years. That's outstanding. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just teach and I try to be real. And I try not to tell too many lies. Or I try not to be bad me too much. <laughs> I, I try to be those seven things up on, on, on the board, on, on the wall. And sometimes, and sometimes I measure up, sometimes, sometimes I don't. I don't. And sometimes, sometimes I'm okay, and sometimes, sometimes I'm not. And sometimes, sometimes I don't want to do, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But well, I got good people that, that stay with me. My wife keeps me pretty straight. Joe keeps me pretty straight. I met a new guy back there, Rick. This guy right over here. Don't want to go there. I, 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 have, I have tremendous highs and I have real bad lows sometimes. And I really think that I'm not good enough to be Christ's ambassador. I think I'm not good enough to represent the Lord. Because I fluctuate. And the people that I see, they don't fluctuate. And then that's why I'm sitting up here because I don't have problems with telling them how I feel. Can, can you hear us fine back there? Is everybody here? Yeah. Can you hear? Can't hear? Yep. Okay. Martha, can you hear? <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk louder so that because I, I want us to be able to, to interact a little bit more on this. So I want to I want Doug to share a little bit of, of his background. Doug, why, why did how did you get involved with BLE and why did you get involved with BLE? Um Actually, I met a gentleman by the name of A.C. Johnson, who's sitting in the back of the room back there. I, I think it was sometime in the late 80s. And uh, A.C. was the executive director of BLE. I had come to know the Lord in 1979 and moved to San Antonio in 80. And I was, I was what I call radically saved. I went from basically no time with Jesus to... I couldn't get enough of them, and uh, took over a couple of business operations here, and just felt like I was supposed to kind of like evangelize the world within my business. And then I met AC, and he told me about BLE, and that there was a ministry specifically for that. So, I mean, I was like on fire, and he'll tell you, I started lining up breakfasts like over at the Maggie's restaurant where I could go and speak to business guys and go, hey, you haven't heard about this? Oh my gosh, this is, you know. Mm. So then I got on, uh, started teaching BLE. Uh, then I, I was on the board several, I don't know, probably two or three times. And so BLE's been a huge part of my life. I've, AC and I have been meeting since the day we met probably at least monthly for probably 15 years weekly maybe another five years every couple of weeks <laughs> now now we still meet and we get a chance and it's probably a couple times a month but he's he was the guy that raised me up as what it's like to be a believer 
uh, for the most part, in addition to my pastors and stuff. So, um, BLE's so been, how does it help? How has it helped you in your work? Oh, it's it's you know I happen to be in the health club business, and years ago, uh, that was not necessarily a, a real shiny example of a Christ-like place. Uh, but I actually got to hear members being one to the Lord in the locker rooms and on the exercise floor and employees uh, coming, coming to know the Lord. So for me, it was a natural. I like to have God conversations. And I, like, I have a heart for people. God's given me a passion for people. So obviously, if I love them that much, I need to tell them about eternity because that's a long time, as Tony will, okay, tell, you, will tell you about. So that's just part of who I am. So it was just a natural fit for me. And of course, I've had an opportunity to go out and teach BLE to a lot of different businesses. And, and um, then Phil called me one day, hadn't taught in a while, and he asked me if I would volunteer to teach at, at Hallmark. So Phil did a, a, a study here, and I did a study at aviation, and that's kind of so when you started like changing. The, so you, you he started a study at, at uh, Hallmark has an aviation facility over on the airport where they train uh, people in aviation work right there. And so that was that the first time you were leading a Bible study there. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. It was Tony in that group. Well, yes and no. Yeah, he was. <laughs> when you hear his story, uh, Mr. Fisher was in that group, who at that time was CEO, now Chancellor. He's a gentleman sitting right here in the, in the blue coat. And over about eight months, and then I think there was one or two other uh, gentlemen, and we just started book one like we always do. Yeah. And um, I wound up at Hallmark because about eight, six or eight months into it, Joe just approached me and said, hey, I want you to think about something, and uh, we'd like you to come, you know, start a campus ministry at Hallmark yeah. and be, be chaplain. So that's kind of how the Hallmark deal, and I, I promised him, I said, Joe, I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to say yes, I, I'm going to pray about it with my wife. And if God tells me to do it, I'm going to quit what I'm doing, and we're going to come. And he said, okay, that's all I could ask for. So my wife and I, who's lovely lady right over there, yeah, yeah. Uh, 47 years, uh, she said, Doug, God's told me that there is no doubt that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So I said, man, you just confirmed what he laid on my heart. So I went and talked to my, my life group teacher, who happened to be a guy I was helping in the real estate business. And he said, man, that, you got to do that. Yeah. So that, that was how I wound up. Yeah, so how do you approach, because you have students that are here that some are professing believers, but there's many here that are not. So when you bring in biblical leadership for excellence, obviously the Bible's involved in it, people looking up verses yeah. and things. How do you approach that with students who come in who, you know, how do you how do you go about that? That was really part of the uh, part of the hurdle, to be honest with you. And so we sell it as a leadership course, and we teach ten weeks of leadership. And it's we don't hide the fact that it's biblical leadership. As a matter of fact, Hallmark University, about a year and a half or two years ago, they redesigned the purpose statement, and it's, it says that we exist. Hallmark University exists. To, to, to nurture the discovery and the development of one's greater purpose through education consistent with biblical principles. Right. So from the day that they start in my character program, which is required of every incoming student, every incoming employee, every incoming uh, faculty <coughs> member, and all existing, they have to go through character, mm -hmm. and, and we meet about it monthly and talk about it. We don't hide the, fi the fact that it's Christ-like. So we present it as a leadership program, and we tell them up front that Hallmark University boldly proclaims that our source of truth and only source of truth is, is the Holy Bible. It's God's yeah. Word. And we don't dictate to them their source of truth so we tell them and we say hey you can have any source of truth that you like but you need to know if you're coming here our source of truth is always going to be god's word we don't care where else you get it from we're, we're we land on god's word every time so if it doesn't match up with that we aren't we aren't buying into it so that's kind of how we do it but one of the things uh, uh, mr fisher and i realized early on was going from absolutely no uh church affiliation or no spiritual life to, to, to the first one, you know, Psalm 116, where I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. And that's a big jump. So we, we might get 10 or 12 or 15 people show up for an orientation where we lay out the, the thing and they, and they buy in. And then about three weeks later, they find out, hey, this is serious stuff. 
and I'm not sure I'm ready for this. So, so you, you lose, you know, 30, 40 percent sometimes. Because they're memorizing uh, verses. Oh, too. they're yeah. memorizing yeah. the verse. And, and at Hallmark, we, we do a thing called character with distinction, and we set the bar high. One of the ways that they can earn that when they graduate, special recognition, and then Rick, who's in career services, he's talking to industry partners about career uh, character with distinction and our graduates, what they're doing as an option to say, hey, I'm someone of, of moral character and ethical character. So um, they, they literally have to go, go through that. And, and we make them memorize all 10 verses. So on the 10th week of BLE, they have to know all 10 verses of that study. So week one, they know one. Week two, they got to know two. Week three, they got to know three. So it goes all the way through. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, well, so take 19, let's see, take 2017. Mr. Fisher's in my BLE class, right? So he gets done. So then we do book two, and then we do book three. And now we've done 75 additional weeks. We've never stopped. We still meet every Tuesday. Tonight, he's going to lead a BLE group here at this campus, starts at 6 and goes to 7.15. And then, or five and six fifteen. Yeah, and then he goes, and then he starts five minutes later and does a second group BLE one himself personally, the man over the whole the whole system. And then I do one at aviation this afternoon uh, from three to fourteen. I co-facilitate with Tony, and then on Fridays I do one here at noon. So right now there's four BLE classes going on at Hallmark University, faculty, staff, and and, and students. But that. Trust me, I'm not saying it's about Doug or about Mr. Fisher or about Tony, and they'll tell you. It's God. God is on fire. He's moving here, and he's using higher education to, to come in. And we don't overtly out there say, hey, because God has laid on the founder, the mission is to reach people that are unreached, that normally probably wouldn't be attracted to the university, and then loving them right where they are when they come loving them just the way they are and then you earn the right to share Jesus with them and, and you get them to, to come to BLE and take leadership and they realize that leadership is a big deal in the in the real workplace right yeah so, well you you have an interesting way of, of, of approaching when when you'll you'll present truth but sometimes you help them understand where it comes from oh absolutely yeah so so you explained to me some one time how you did that where there were there would be a Bible verse, but it may not have the Bible reference with it, that's, right? That's correct. In character, we, we had to ease our way into this, right? So part of the challenge, Mr. Fisher asked me to create a character education program that was in what's called a, a boot camp format. So I basically took what existed, and then I reformulated that from, a, from one type of a study over seven terms and con condensed it into a uh, four and a half hour of content and so we started off initially without putting any of the scriptures in the character training and I would just uh, very uh, kind of under the covers throw out stuff that was was spiritual and and then I got a little more comfortable in where we were going and how it was going to work so then I would start putting up a scripture maybe one scripture every other module mm -hmm. and then I wouldn't put the, the verse or the book and I would say okay so I want you to read this truth and if you think it's true then I want you to buy into it but if you don't think it's true that's okay and then they would say anybody anybody disagree with that and they say no it's okay so that's from God's holy word that's Titus 2 6 and 7 if you ever want to go look at that and, the, and it's, their eyes were light up like, you know, so then, so now, honestly, we have gone back and we've rewritten every definition of all those traits. We sat month after month searching the scriptures for verses that support our definitions. And then we wrote the definitions based on God's word. And, and so you can't find those on Google. You can't find them in the dictionary. Those are Hallmark University definitions that we teach, and we boldly proclaim that they were written by Hallmark based on God's Word. And guess what? Guess how many objections we get to that when we teach character? Zero. Zero. You know what we get? Oh, I can't believe I came here, and you guys are talking about the Bible and talking about God and stuff. I mean, God 
has changed. I mean, he's just changing even the people he's sending to us. I'm not saying they're believers. I'm saying they're at least open and receptive and realizing that we are speaking truth. That's very salt and very light. In terms yeah. of very, very respectful of people, honoring people, not uh, coercing people, but inviting them to live in a larger story, really, is what it's about. So, so you and Tony, uh, he came to one of the studies you had. So, Tony, when you first came to a study, what was your first reaction? What did you tell Doug? Doug asked me, was I going to come back? And I said, probably not. Um, <laughs> while you're here, I told him I didn't know. You know, don't expect too much out of me. Because I have a very, I'm very skeptic about people that talk about God. I'm very skeptical about people that wear suits and ties and try to tell me about God and Jesus. So I just looked at him and asked the way I felt about it. I really went the first time because Joe was there. And so now how are you going to be a spiritual leader on your side of the tracks and your boss is there and you're not? So first of it was just show. It was a front. That's all, that's all it was. Truthfully, it was a front. So but I went and it was, wasn't that bad? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. You know, like the, the memorizing the Bible verses the first time were, all, were awful. It was like a train wreck because I just I couldn't memorize. I couldn't memorize it. I would have it before I went to sleep, and when I wake up, it's gone. <laughs> it's just it looked like I never studied it. So we would go through that, and I would fumble through it. And I would get through it. They would help me out, and it just it's just like little nudges. Just I went to the next one. I wasn't sold out for Jesus. I didn't know who the guy was that that close. I just went, and it wasn't too bad to be with other guys that were having problems. But I got more problems than they got. You know, I guess maybe I'm more transparent with my problems than what they are with theirs, you know, because they weigh up in the organization and anybody can't say, yeah, I got that same problem, but we get close to it. So after the third or fourth time. So why'd you, why'd you come back? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't give you a, a, a strong foundation of why I came back because after the first or second time, I didn't care if, if I went or not. You know, I'm not going to do something I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, not for long. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed that I just kept going back. Mm -hmm. So that would have to lead me to believe now since it's two years. Over two years. It was two years that it wasn't in my own understanding that I was doing this. So uh, God doesn't work. He just doesn't say at least with me, he does it. He just puts that little thing there, and, and you go to it's small degrees at a time, very small. Yeah, well, let's back up a little bit. Tell, tell us about your spiritual journey. So let's back up a little bit. And... Uh -huh. Why are we backing up? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 let's you pick. Where, where was born? <laughs> <laughs> so I know you and I talked about some, some challenges that you went through earlier on, and uh, spiritual spiritual journey is, is not good. It's not good on on, on my side. Uh, you know, my I was probably my mom and dad were was close to being Roman Catholic, but my mom got excommunicated out of the church in 1950 because she remarried. So I I threw them people off. I didn't want to be associated with somebody that didn't want to be associated with my mother. So on the so. Um, I had I was kind of angry with God for that because I didn't understand that, but I still went to a Catholic school, and I've, I've been indoctrinated not not indoctrinated I've been associated with spiritual things all my life. We could never connect the dots. You know what I'm saying? So when I joined the military, whew, I really wasn't a real good person then. I don't think I did any of those things at all. When I was 19, I mm -mm, failed out of college when I was 19. Didn't know how to tell my folks I failed out of college. So I just put my clothes on for like two or three weeks and just rolled, rolled to ale in Chicago. But it's cold in January. Then I needed somewhere to go. I didn't know what to do. My grandfather died. He told me to kill him. He said, why don't you just kill me? And I, I, I don't get over those things. I just don't get over them. And so I don't have a spiritual walk real good when I was young. I was angry with God for a long time until I probably met Doug and I probably got over it. Because, uh, you know, what you're going to do? Well, God, uh, I'm going to knock you out tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. You can't do nothing with God <laughs> except accept it. <laughs> I met my wife. 
I don't know how that happened. That that was a no doubt about a gift. I mean, if anything was going to help me out and anchor me some, it was her. You know, I, I told her to never back down from me. You know, just stay strong because don't let me. Just I need help. I need help on my life. So I got there, married her, and that's a good story. I think I knew that woman maybe two hours before I said I was going to marry her. <laughs> Seriously. I came back from overseas, I came back from Thailand, Vietnam era, I met her, that woman kissed me, I kissed her, I lost my mind, and then I lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and seriously, I just said, that's it, I'm not going to look anymore, I don't have no desire for any other woman. Now, I like to look at women, but that's as far as it's going. <laughs> and I'm going home. So, but, but it wasn't for her allowing me to express my love to people the way I do. She doesn't get upset when I hug another woman because she knows I'm doing it the right way. It's not, you know, chest to chest or thigh to thigh. It's off to the side. Unless you get the little short ladies that are blessed and it's, <laughs> it's hard to hug them and be correct, but I, I try to do that anyway. <laughs> We're gonna have, we might introduce a course on this. We could, <laughs> you can teach it for us, okay? Yeah. Depending on the height of the woman. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Now my walk is, it's, it's, it's a business, it's serious. You know, it's serious, you know. And you, I, you know, and that's, when we did that Bible verse with 520 Corinthians that we're Christ ambassadors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like, that's, that's serious. You can't be goofing around with the Lord. You know, and it, and it bothers me when sometimes I fall short. I hope, but he's never fallen short. Amen. Amen. Thank God that somebody forgive me for all the stuff that I've done wrong. You just kind of dust yourself off and, and you get back in the fight, you know, but and, and that's how, that's my walk. I have a trouble with earthly things and spiritual things sometimes. I don't know how to connect what's earthly and what's spiritual. But if I think about it, it says what's kind, what's charity, what's loving, what blah, blah, blah. All those things are spiritual, but whoever thinks of that. When I'm going, when I'm being drugged into the poo-poo, you don't think about this. This is terrible. So, yeah, so Tony, whenever, was there a point in time where things got really hard and difficult and was a real turning point for you? And Oh yeah, one day my wife rolled over and looked at me, she said, I hate you. <laughs> and I said, Jesus, baby, how do you go from love me to hate me? There's, there's love, I love you a little less. You know, I, I like you, I dislike you, now we down. Because that's the way men think, it's just sort of where I don't like you. Look, I hate you, I can spit. I said, ooh. Ooh, well, that's when I had I had a drinking problem then. You all wouldn't know that, but whew, I drank up a lot of Hennessy. And uh, so I got out the bed and I went to the kitchen, poured me another drink, and before I got it up to my lips, something said, tea. And I said, you know what? And I had a conversation with somebody in the kitchen. And he said, I said, you know, you said you would never put more on me than what I could handle. And I don't think I can handle this because I get ready to lose my family my wife and my children, and then the real stupid in me says, well, all you got to do is just take your wife out and you'll have the kids. You don't have to change at all. I said, that's, mm -mm. So I knew what was going on there, and I poured it back in there, and I asked my wife, I said, baby, um, can I just touch you, just finger-wise, nothing big. I think that was the first prayer I said to my family. And I just said, you know, Lord, don't, don't let this happen. Because I won't know what to do. I don't know about how you guys feel, but if you lost, mm. the, you know, if you lost the one that nothing else means anything to me. I, and I don't think she understands that because I don't worry about a whole lot of stuff. As long as I got her, I'm okay. As long as I got Jesus and her, I'm dynamite. <laughs> you understand me? So that's the way I feel about it. And, whew, so I just got to bed, went to sleep, and woke up the next morning. And I looked at her. She looked at me. I looked at her. She didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. Some said, "Don't say nothing." <laughs> <laughs> I got up. I put my clothes on and left. And I wasn't expecting no conversation when I got home. No dinner. I didn't expect to be home when I got home. You might went to the movie. I came home. I looked at her. She looked at me. Some said, "Don't say nothing." I, dinner was cooked. I said, Phew, "I've averted a, a big major problem." I let it stew for a while, and then it just. Then I said, I got to change. And I think maybe three, four months after that, mm -hmm. I was doing something that says, something said, ask your wife if you were a problem drinker. I said, baby, mom a problem drinker? And she said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I said, uh-oh. And I said, I need your help to help me drink. 
I said, the max I need to drink is maybe two drinks and I'm done. Help me. But I wasn't a man enough to say, I can quit. So I was going to drink a Coke to let everybody still think I was still drinking. And when I was really drinking Coke. And now, I'm okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so now when she wakes up in the morning, what does she say to you? Hi. <laughs> so, so the love she, she asked me, what do I want for breakfast? Because I'm, I'm, I'm usually at work by now. So she just said, what do you want for breakfast? What do you want? So it's either going to be a ham and egg sandwich, a sausage and egg sandwich, either lunch meat sandwich for lunch, and you've got to hit the road. And, and, and look, she's here to yes. be with you. Doesn't that say something? Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And, that, and that's just great. Yeah. Right. So here, here, here's Tony, comes in this study, and he is not sure why he's there, except to maybe curry favor with the boss, says he's probably not going to come back, and now he's helping co-lead a study. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know, to, to see, and to see the pathway, the small story where he was heading in his life and in his marriage. And to see a man who loves his wife and that she loves him and he is active in his, in his work. And Doug, I want you to share a little bit about a few weeks ago what happened in one of the studies. And, and I think it's investing in the people study. It was uh, book one, uh, chapter seven, uh, what is uh, success? What is, what what is success? success? Mm -hmm. and, and we're co-facilitating it and he's leading it. So we get to question seven. I think it was question seven. But anyway, and it talks about, you know, identifying heroes in the Bible and then heroes in your life. So there's a, about a 41 or 42-year-old guy, Jewish man, sitting in BLE. He's learned all the memory verses verbatim. Um, and he says, well, uh, there's probably, I've probably got four heroes. And he named three of them, he told just a brief story about them, and then he looked at, at Mr. Harris, and he said, Mr. Harris, you're my fourth hero. And, and Mr. Harris, wow, you know, he just, he just like, like, neither one of us were expecting that. But this guy, if, if you ever came to the aviation campus and see the love that pours out of him, you know, he, he just, he's just driven. He hugs everybody. You see, walk through the campus, he's praying with the students. He may be praying with the faculty member. Okay, so, so Tony handles, handles that one. And then the next guy is about 50, young guy. Compared to me. <laughs> he's about 50, and he looks at Tony, and he, and he, and he starts weeping. And he says, Tony? You know, I think in my whole life, I, I don't really have any heroes. I, I, I can only name one. And Tony said, well, all right, well, who, who, who would that be? He said, you. And, and Tony's sitting there looking at him, and he, he doesn't know what to think, right? Because he thinks he's just going to work and doing what he does. And yeah, so the guy then just literally, and then by that time, we were probably, oh, pretty close to weeping or weeping. But anyway, so he just, he says, man, I've never, I've just never had anybody in my life. He said, you know, I didn't even realize. And his testimony in, in week one at orientation was I always ask him in 30 seconds, tell me why you feel like God put you in that chair today. And, and, and these guys, both of these guys said, you know, Doug, we, we have no idea. We're going through life. And we heard about Hallmark University and, and never thought about going to a university. Just, we, we started looking into it. and. Uh, and for some reason, God had to stop doing what we were doing. We showed up here in aviation, and, he, and he's looking at Tony like, Tony, um, I think it was to, to, meet, to meet you. I, th I think it was to, to watch the way you've lived. We've been, you know, watching you in class and hearing you and see the way you love people and sharing your story and sharing Jesus. So, I mean, what more could you add? I mean, if you get one of those in 30 years of doing BLE, right, if you get to sit and listen to that, None of that's propped up. That's all real stuff coming from grown men's hearts, right? Uh, you're blessed if you get to hear one of those. 
and he, he heard two of those at, at one time. And to be able to be co-facilitating them and hear that, it kind of bows you over. But it's those little, I call them God winks. Yes. Every once in a while, you know, you, you evaluate. I told my wife the other day, she came home and I got my, my box out on my table and she knows what I'm doing. I'm going through and reading the box of letters from parents of basketball players that I coached and people that work for me and people are praying for me. And I, and I just, and I got a videotape a guy made for me. And every once in a while, I have to go back and remind myself that, you know what, whatever you're up to today, it's really about, it's about this stuff. So that, and that fires me up. That's God allowing you to see that you're doing what I'm asking you to do. And again, that's not about me, that's him. And the privilege that I have, that this guy, this now listen, I can dramatically show you almost exactly what he did the first day. He said, hey, I, I have no idea why I'm here, I don't care, I don't even know if I'm coming back next time, probably won't, you know? I, I just, I done probably won't, so don't get your hopes up because I won't be here. And he's, he's probably missed two while he was on vacation since December of 16. Right? So God, now this is just one example, God is working, That's it. and you can imagine the impact he's had.